Good morning. Happy solstice, everybody, for December 21st to 2021. So today we are doing light anchoring. Thank you all for joining us who are here live. And again, if you are here live, please do drop down onto the video chat or onto the chat screen. And um, we always have some phenomenal people here. So also, if you are here live and you have questions concerning light anchoring or the grid work, um, as we are talking along the way, please do drop your questions in the questions tab. All right. So I'm just going to check in and see who's all here this morning. Hey, well, we got people from everywhere thank you all everybody for being here this morning or this afternoon evening wherever you're at okay so let's take a moment to get into our space so again going into the sacred space the heart close in your eyes if you wish it just makes it a little easier to get there Imagining within your heart is your light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light of the earth up into the heart. And that breath is an important thing. Next, we connect heart to heart to creation, source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that. Take in that deep breath from creation into the heart. The third breath, imagining bringing in that light of the earth, that light of creation. It comes into and through you. It mixes with you, your light within the heart. That is the trinity of the trinity breath, not just the three breaths. It is a grounding as you ground into the heart of the earth. It is a connecting as you connect to soul, creation, however you see this. So you are grounded, connected, and in the heart space. So this truly is the basics for anchoring columns of light. When we anchor a column of light, it is simply a visualization and intention and being in the heart space. And it is watching that connection from the earth to creation. And it is a light that oscillates, it flows. It flows both directions. So it is grounding, connecting for the person as we are that column of light, that Trinity breath. Um, and then that holds that support, uh, the support of the earth, the support of creation. All right. So, yay. Happy solstice from Calgary, Charlotte, Australia. Well, I know a lot of you from all over here. Thank you again for being here. Okay, so <clears throat> let me shut off my phone. I see it's ringing this morning. All right. So light anchoring. Um, we'll give a quick uh, background of light anchoring and then some of the tools that were created along the way for this purpose. And then we will get into doing the actual light anchoring. And of course, we'll discuss along the way what it is that you use it for. And pardon me, it might have been the longest night of the year here in the northern of the equator, but man, it was a long night. Couldn't sleep very well. So pardon me for a moment as I'm catching up on some tea. All right, light anchoring. We started out. Um, when I was a municipal water operator in several municipalities here in the Black Hills, and I was just getting into energy work, I was just waking up and I wanted to do something energetically for the water. Cause uh, one of the first things that, um, I saw was like Dr. Emoto's work. 
on how, you know, like with the rice experiment, how you can put emotions into something and it changes it. Like with rice, you put the emotions of joy into one and the rice stays good, mold free. You put the emotions of hate and anger into another jar by just speaking into them, uh, sending them your emotions. And then that jar of rice will turn moldy, icky and black. So that was one of the, the things. And then Dr. Emoto also had the experiments with the, uh, the frozen water crystals. Um, so anyway, Dr. Emoto's work is what changed my perception and belief on how we can affect water and how we can affect physical reality. So as I was a water operator and just getting into the energetics of things, I was wanting to find a way to raise the frequency and vibration of the water in the municipalities. So I believe, and I was trying to remember where light anchoring came from, and I'm fairly certain it was with my sister Brenda. I believe she was doing light anchors for clearing work, you know, and this was before I was even, you know, doing anything. Um, I was still very science minded at the time. Um, so once I first did a light anchor, um, and, and I believe it was Brenda who taught me how to do that about going into the heart space and just using your imagination, your visualization, your intention, and imagining that column of light that goes from source, creation, central sun, however you see and say that, we'll just call it creation or source, how that light comes down through the water well, and it goes deep into the earth and connects to the heart of the earth. And then she as consciousness, as a light being, and as a light itself within the in the center of the earth sends that light back up through that water well uh that that wellhead for for all the municipal waters so as we see that column of light and it is going both ways it is supporting and bringing that energetics of light into the water so i started to actually teach this too in some of our dowsing classes that we would take a bottle of water and we use our dowsing rods and we would find the energy field of a bottle of water, you know, and, and some of the waters, the, the energy field is, you know, just inches out from the water. And then we would anchor a column of light into that bottle. And then we would find out the energy field of the water went out sometimes 300 feet how and we were all finding that in our dowsing classes so that was another a, another um exercise that we did that really anchored that into the side of the brain that the logical side that hey this is doing something so i decided to take it upon myself to go through and anchor columns of light into all the wellheads of the municipalities that I was working with, as well as the water holding tanks. One place here, gosh, they had like seven wells. And so the columns of light, when you traditionally, when you just go into the heart space and you imagine that column of light, it will stay there for about eight days and then it just dissipates unless you put your attention back onto it. Now this, again, this was the first ways that we would anchor columns of light just through intention and visualization. Those particular columns of light only last for eight days unless, again, you put your awareness back onto it. Um, so I was finding that I had to, you know, every week go and check these wellheads and water towers and and just put my awareness back onto them anchor the column of light again and that was a weekly process so i was really wanting to find a better solution to this and you know something that didn't take so much time so my sister brenda she said well create a grid so on December 25th, we're not quite the nine year anniversary, but on December 25th of 2012, um, a path partner in me at the time, um, Melissa, we went to Hot Springs, South Dakota to the springs um, where all the water comes out that feeds um, Fall River. And we anchored a column of light there 
And we called in all these beings. We called in archangels. We called in the spirit of water. Um, we called in um, some of the dragons, just higher dimensional beings that could put their attention onto this column of light. Then we did another column of light and we watched as those two columns of light had like a connector, a filament. They would connect to each other. So then as we started to add more columns of light into this, each one had a little connector to the other. So it was creating a grid. They were all connected. And we had all of these beings that we asked and that came in to hold their attention onto this column of light so that that entire grid system would stay. So once we started to create that grid, which is just columns of light that are connected to each other, then they were staying there indefinitely if needed, if in the highest and best good. So within that first column of light, we put in all kinds of great intentions into that of it um, being healing, cleaning, clearing, that it's it brings the water to a state that is the most beneficial and healing for the person, for the environment. Um, so we, you know, we did a lot of work with that and we put in love and gratitude. So our intention was to bring through the frequencies of love and gratitude into the water and that we could also use this for cell phone towers. And basically, either your water would contain love and gratitude, the cell phone tower emissions would contain love and gratitude. So we called this the global love and gratitude grid. And we actually put up a website for that um, on December 26 of 2012. And it's still up there, globallovingratitudegrid.com. And it, first, we were mapping out all of these different grids um, that people would send us their, their grid points, their light anchor points from all around the world. And we started to create a Google map for this, which I don't believe is any longer out there. And it's obviously not been updated because there are a lot of light anchors out there. Um, so with this global love and gratitude grid, um, it was something that when I made my first light anchor, when I made the first light anchor into a municipal water tank, I could see the energetics of the water just shine. And then I could follow it all the way through the pipelines to a house, into a person's glass of water. They drink it. That goes into them. And then plus everything that flows out into the earth. So it was, it was really profound. And I still clear as day remember seeing that very first time that we anchored a column of light into a municipal water tank and how that affected everyone and everything throughout the water system. So that was the beginning of the global love and gratitude grid. Now in the very beginning, um, it, and it was very simple to process. And again, it's just kind of like doing the Trinity breath and imagining that column of light. And then you imagine connecting it to all those others. Now that's not the way we have to do this anymore. Um, but at the time, we could not anchor columns of light into electrical substations uh, to change the electrical. It just was not, it, it didn't set well with the, the grid. The global love and gratitude grid wasn't, it wouldn't hold that anchor of light into electrical substation. Um, you know, those fenced in areas with all the great big old electrical capacitors and everything with all the lines that go out. So at that time, we had to anchor a column of light into that electrical substation and then call in somebody that was in the highest and best to come in and hold their attention onto that column of light. So then that would change that electrical. And again, it would send the frequencies of love and gratitude through the electrical lines all the way through. So the global love and gratitude grid, as I say, a lot of people jumped on this bandwagon and there were people all over the world that were anchoring these columns of light. And again, that was in 2012 through 2014 that we it was really 
popular at the time that a lot of people were doing that work um, because we always have people send in all their map points. And so it created a grid system all over the planet. Then at one time, I believe it was either in 2015 or 2018 when, I think it was 2015, when the earth went through a giant shift in that at the time we were doing a lot of grid clearing work of non-beneficial grid systems on the planet. And as we were doing that, um, <clears throat> we were finding that um, as we were clearing those and we were making more of the beneficial global love and gratitude grid, at one point in time, Gaia went through a transition in April, I believe it was April of 2015, that she sloughed off all of the old grid systems on the planet, all the old non-beneficial ones that she could. She sloughed them off. And she integrated the global love and gratitude grid as one of the earth grids. That was huge. Um, so very much in support with Gaia. Every time we create a column of light, a light anchor, it is making that connection between the earth and creation. It is it is making a bridge. It is making that connection. It is raising the frequency and vibration of the planet is how I see that. So every time you anchor a column of light, to me throughout the years, it has always been that it is raising the light quotient on the planet. Kind of like what Slim Sperling said after he passed away. He said about the tools that, you know, every tensoring created raises the light quotient on the planet. And I totally believe that with the columns of light. Um, so let's see. I'm going to jump back in here real fast, you guys, and check and see what's happening on our live chat. And again, this is recorded for YouTube as well. So oh my goodness, we've got people from everywhere here. Thank you again for being here today. Um, all right, so we'll discuss the next leg of anchoring lights or the next phase that occurred. So the golden fire and light. So at one time, I think it was 2016, <clears throat> we had a friend, uh, Shell Darling, Master Dowser from Golden Light Dowsing, asked me to create a dowsing rod for her. So in my years of teaching dowsing, you know, I discovered that there's so much that we can do through the consciousness work. And so as we were creating a dowsing rod and the sacred measures, of course, my I asked my sister who co-creates with me on with the etheric tools. I said, OK, I really want to create this dowsing rod that does all this stuff for us, that will move the geopathic and geomagnetic, that will automatically close portal vortexes, um, you know, that that'll do all this stuff that we can do with consciousness work when we are working with earth energies. And so as we were creating that energetic tool, we found what we call just the golden light rod. It was this etheric um, light rod, about that big around, about 18 to 22 inches tall. And it was just light. And it presented for us to use, but there was, it wasn't quite activated yet. So Brenda did some work to activate it. And then when she did, it emitted all these different colors and sounds and everything that came from this light rod. And of course we create our physical tools where we cut that measurement to the hundred thousandths of a centimeter, very specific measurements. So this is the standard TO2 econ unit, the STU. And this measure is what we then connected to that ancient etheric tool, the golden light rod. So in the beginning, we had what we called the golden light wands. They were simply just um, a little brass wand, very simple, one of these without the handle. And that golden light rod was the first one that we were utilizing um, at the time when we created the dowsing rods with it, we were finding that that ancient etheric tool would, for the earth energies, it would move or clear 
move and clear geopathic geomagnetic lines that were not beneficial for a space. It would close portal vortexes. Um, it was everything that we were looking for and the dowsing rod, what it does energetically. But it also would clear timelines and realities for the person. You could run energy with it. Uh, it shoots out these little poofy balls of light. Pretty amazing tool, that golden light wand and our original golden light dowsing rod. So at the time, we were still looking for something to cross over ghosts and waywards. And so the original columns of light that we were creating were just a high vibration column of light and they would work with moving and shifting geomagnetic and geopathic energies. Then the golden fire came along. So when the golden fire, that sacred heart activation, when that came along and that golden fire measurement and that golden fire energetics, we then put that into the handles of all the dowsing rods. And then it became the golden fire and light. That is why these are called the golden fire and light wands is because it contains that golden light energetics of that original ancient etheric tool that's older than the galaxy, probably older than the universe. Then, and it is only the soul that can wield that. So it is seen that whenever you are holding on to one of these wands, that your soul is holding on to that ancient etheric tool and doing the work. So this is connecting you with your higher soul self. And it is actually the higher soul self, your higher consciousness that is doing the work based on our intentions and us holding that space. So with the golden fire aspect to these, then when we would anchor a column of light, it would bring through the golden fire. That golden fire is the one that will go out and um, reactivate the sacred heart. So for a ghost or a wayward, as we call them, when they come into that column of light that creates with the golden fire, it will cross them over. So you can then anchor those columns of light into cemeteries and old buildings, things like that. And the golden fire was one that was working very well for electromagnetics. So when we started anchoring columns of light with the golden light rods and the golden fire and light rods, we were no longer connecting to the global love and gratitude grid. When we anchor a column of light with one of these wands or dowsing rods, then it is creating its own separate column of light that will stay there indefinitely if needed. It's not connected to the rest of the grid. So we no longer needed the grid to hold these in place. So the golden fire is excellent for EMF. I mean, it even restructures 5G millimeter waves. So when you anchor a column of light now with the golden fire and light wand, it is bringing through the energetics of the golden fire that is not only working with ghost sway words, working with water, of course, and it is also working with electromagnetics. So the columns of light are huge. And this is what I've gone all over the world teaching these columns of light, uh, anchoring these. That was what I did for years was just teach that class only and the Merkaba once in a while. So with with these um so this was the the next huge step in the evolution of the columns of light and this lasted for quite a number of years i don't remember i think it was uh, i think it's been like six years maybe with these seven years i think 2014 is when we put out the first golden light rod um so now then as everything evolves with the light anchoring um one of the next tools was the Wings of Talk. Uh, the original Wings of Talk that came out here a couple years ago was one that still uses the same measurements that we use in the wands and the dowsing rods. They're just a fraction of that. So this actually has two measures in there, the STU, the standard Teotihuacan unit, and the Golden Fire. And so the Wings of Talk would also anchor a column of light. They would create a column of light, albeit a little bit different. These, instead of just a column, it comes down in a column, and then there's more like this disc-shaped space also that comes through the wings of talk. And again, we will uh, walk through 
creating these columns of light here in a minute. So with that column of light, um, with the wings of talk, it was more for environmental as well because it spread out into a larger area. Now with the um, with the wings of talk, again, it was just creating that uh, larger space. The next evolution in the light anchors came, um, I guess, just recently. I'm trying to think. Um, because the golden fire was the one. And then when we just created the wisdom wand, when we use a wisdom wand to anchor a column of light, it is different than if we use a quantum healer. Again, a quantum healer contains the energetics of that golden fire and light rod. So that's why we can use a quantum healer to anchor that column of light. So you can anchor a column of light with a quantum healer, with any of the brass wands, the dowsing rod, Again, how you'd use a dowsing rod is just holding it upright when you do the visualization process. Then, of course, the wings of talk, the on the wings of talk, and the wings of talk pendant can all create those anchors of light that will stay there indefinitely if needed. Now, the wisdom wand, when you use the wisdom wand to anchor a column of light, it is different than using the other tools because this is carrying that field, that wisdom field. So I see that when you anchor a column of light with the wisdom wand, it does have that center column of light of that golden fire and light rod. But then it has another field outside of it, which is how I see this wand when you're holding it, that there's like this, it looks like a sun. It's like orangish, reddish, goldish. And it's, um, you know, it's almost like a cocoon is what it looks like around that space. So when you anchor the column of light with the wisdom wands, it's also creating that cocoon space. All right, so that's kind of the evolution of the energies of the wands. Now, the columns of light, why exactly would you do them? Well, of course, crossing over ghost waywards, um, you know, shifting electromagnetics and cell phone towers and communication towers and dropping it into electrical substations. So then that energetics of love and gratitude follow through all the electrical lines. So like Hoover Dam out in Nevada, drop anchors of light there into their electrical production or into the wind towers. And then that will follow through to the different places. When it hits a substation, when it hits those the substations, though, it changes it. So when you anchor columns of light and where to anchor them at, you can anchor them directly like into a wind tower. But if you anchor it into that electrical substation where you see all of that equipment that's fenced off with all the power lines going out, that's the best place to anchor the column of light. Um, <clears throat> so then some of the other um, purposes for the columns of light is that when I was teaching it, I would always have people create a column of light right in front of them uh, just a small one and imagine it only being about two feet across and then you would step in and out of that column of light so when i was first becoming sensitive to the subtle energies i i i enjoyed that very much of creating a column of light and being able to step in and just being in the heart space and feeling and you can feel the difference between being inside and outside of that column of light very fun exercise um, and if you feel you don't feel, it's just a matter of going into the heart and just being in the heart and then seeing the difference from there. Because when you're in the heart, you're not in the head and you're not in judgment and denial and limiting and all the stuff that you get when you're here. So it's an exercise. And if you don't feel any of these energies, don't worry about it. Um, if you don't think you've made a column of light you have our intentions are very powerful so we'll get into columns of light here in a moment um let's see any other uses for the columns of light you usually have people put them over in on their bed and you can create a column of light over your bed that is with your intention for rest and rejuvenation um, you can create columns of light in the schools again cemeteries old buildings when you create a column of light, you are not 
forcing any kind of energetics on anybody. So you can anchor columns of light all day into the Capitol buildings, into Washington, into wherever it is that you have a discrepancy with. You can anchor a column of light anywhere and it's not going to force a change on anybody. What these columns of light will do for people is, is that it's an energetic field that they can choose to resonate with or not. So that column of light will be there. Let's say we put one over the Capitol building in Washington, DC, or over the floor of the Senate, wherever it is for politics, let's say, and we have a column of light there. It will cross over the ghosts, the waywards, non-beneficial energy attachments. It'll clear the mental, the emotional, it'll clear the fields. But it's not going to force anybody to see anything any different. It is just simply a space, a sacred space. And with that sacred space, that's where the magic occurs. That is truly where the changes occur is, is that when somebody is in a sacred space, they're more at peace. It brings them possibly more into the heart space. So that's the way any of the tools are or any of the columns of light is that they hold space for a person to come more into alignment and into the heart. Again, this does not violate the free will of anybody. So the columns of light are kind of like our tools. They're space holders. Okay. So we will keep moving on here for the columns of light. Um, we have several videos out there on the columns of light. Um, all the way from the very first golden light rod to the golden fire and light rods. I think the last video we put out was light anchoring 3.0. Now in light anchoring 3.0, it was basically the attunement to the sacred heart, to that golden fire. <clears throat> and as we have that attunement to the golden fire, the sacred heart, that is the energetics that comes through to cross over ghost waywards. And that works so well with, with um, electromagnetics, with electricity. So when you do the light anchor in 3.0 video that walks you through to activate the sacred heart, because then you bring that golden fire out onto that field as well. Today, we're going to do the attunement with the wisdom wand. Now with the attunements um, that we've done the videos, you don't need the physical tool. So during those attunement processes and the one today is basically when we get into that space, you just imagine holding the wisdom wand because it is a quantum energy tool. You can access it remotely throughout all time and space. You can just intend once you know what this is and you see it and you connect with the energy of it, you feel into it by just having a picture, um, whether it's a picture on the website or the, this right here, you just feel into the wand and you know the energetics. And then as you know, the energetics, you can call that in. It's like an attunement. So you are attuned to the energetics. We will do some activations today. And that is the activation of the sacred heart, the golden fire. So then when we do our light anchoring today, we will bring through the energetics of the golden fire of that golden light rod and of the wisdom energetics will all come through in these columns of light that you create. And again, you don't need to have the physical tools. The physical tools are great for your attention, for the mind, for the mind to see something and for it to work easier for people who need that. But again, we're going to go through some exercises with this. So, um, thank you all for being here again and for, Bearing with me, I feel a little discombobulated today. Of course, there's been a lot of things going on. I don't know if any of you see the social media, but we just put up a post yesterday of some interesting, fun things happening on the planet. I mean, there's so much shifting right now. You know, things are moving so flipping fast and things are moving in consciousness faster than they have on this planet before of the of everything put together all time put together 
all the way up until just the past couple of years, consciousness is moving fast. So it's a beautiful time to be. <clears throat> and so we'll create some of these wisdom fields and that might help you with your perspective on that. It is a beautiful time to be too, because um, it can help to change perspectives. Okay, here we go. So we're going to take a journey into the heart space. We're going to have your soul come in and activate the sacred heart. The sacred heart is the trifold gold flame heart that you always see Jesus and Mary walking with, but it's beyond religion. It's not anything based on religious beliefs. This is based on human and human potentiality in what we hold. So there are many things that we hold within our DNA. And that is part of what these fields are doing. These columns of light, the wisdom field, the sacred heart. It is bringing that remembrance into the DNA. It is activating quantum DNA. It is bringing us more in alignment and more online. So these columns of light are huge. They're not just for clearing energy. They are for helping to step, step up everybody in that comes into contact with these fields. So, yep, the higher the consciousness, the better this planet's going to be. And we're moving in consciousness so fast that it is going to just, you know, allow instant shifts to happen because we see people themselves who shift instantly, who heal themselves, who release all their baggage, who step out of being a victim, who step out of being, um, you know, just, just mundane and in a pain body and not stepping into their creatorness. Um, so we see people shift instantly every day working with these energies, working with these tools, working with all these different fields, with the consciousness work. And so when you anchor these columns of light, it is going to hold space for those shifts to occur all around you. Okay, here we go. We're going to walk into the heart space, bring in your soul, do the sacred heart activation. This will be the first part of our attunement. So again, closing the eyes, going to the physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light, that unconditional love and energy of the earth. Up through the feet and into the heart. Next, connecting to the heart of creation, breathing in that light into the heart. The third breath, breathing in the energy of both creation and earth, bringing it in with you. And just imagining yourself as a column of light. <clears throat> you are grounded, connected, and in the heart space. You are supported by the earth and by creation. Next, we're going to imagine your soul standing before you. However that presents, whether it is a body of light, an orb, a feeling, asking your soul to step in, your higher soul self, your consciousness, to just step in and touch your heart, your physical heart, and activate that sacred heart, that golden fire. Taking that deep breath in, and just allowing that heart to just become brilliant with your light, with the golden fire, that golden light. Now you can imagine that light or that fire going into every cell of the body, in between every cell. If you have an ache or a pain, just wrap it up with that light. This is a part of you. This is another aspect of you and your light is the sacred heart it is all you beautiful 
So now then with that golden fire energy, that sacred heart, that is always within your heart now. You never have to go look for it. It is right there in the heart. <clears throat> okay, while we are in this space, imagine yourself where you would like to create your first column of light. Let's say like in your living room, a space within your home. And we're just going to imagine and intend that this column of light is only like two or three feet across. So just use your imagination of that little column that you want to create in your space. And this is just for you to step in. This will be like your little shower curtain, your little, your little energetic shower that you'll be able to step into that space whenever you feel. So imagine yourself. <clears throat> oh, sorry, we haven't. Make sure we can hear well. So having yourself standing where it is that you want to create your column of light. And it's basically doing the Trinity breath, going into the heart, imagining that light of the earth coming up through all the way up to creation, source, soul, creator, God. <clears throat> and then imagining that light coming from creation all the way down through you and into the core of the earth, the heart of the earth. So as you're standing in that space where you're creating that column of light and it is grounded into the earth, connected to creation, and it contains that golden fire. Now, as you imagine stepping out of that space, that column of light stays there. You have now set your first column of light and it is something that you can work with on your own to play with that. All right. Okay, so next we're going to work with the energetics of this wisdom to bring that wisdom field in. So choose another spot, maybe close to where you did the first one. Just let you remember to keep these two apart because I would like for you to create the second column of light with this wisdom field and just so that you can feel a difference between these energetics. So to bring in this wisdom field, all right, <clears throat> you know, I guess we still need the attunement to the golden light rod. Let's go back into your original column of light that you just created. And that is a column of light that has the golden fire. And it has that energy of creation and the energy of earth. Now imagine that you are holding this wand, the brass wand. Imagine you're holding this brass wand and that your soul is holding that golden light rod, that higher dimensional tool, and that that becomes a column of light along with that column that you have there. That there is this ancient etheric tool that's simply a sparkling light in itself. 
and that becomes a part of that calm of light. <sighs> Beautiful. Now what this will do is this will work with all the geomagnetic lines that come through the home. It will work with the underground aquifers, the underground waterways. And it just brings more layers of energetics there that are all in the highest and best. Again, it is your soul that is wielding this energetics. So that is the second attunement. So now then your column of light has the golden light rod, has the golden fire. Now, as you are still standing in that column of light, we will attune you to this wisdom energetics. So simply being in the heart and asking all that you are as a soul to come into the heart center, to come into the here and now, into this zero point space, the space within your heart that is nothing but your soul. The energetics within this column now, we're going to bring in this wisdom energy. The wisdom is simply all that you are, your experiences, your lifetimes, aches, pains, traumas throughout all life are coming into the here and now with their being transformed into wisdom. We're not bringing in the pain, the suffering, the old stuff. As we bring it into this space of the heart, it is all turned to wisdom. Don't get your mind wrapped around this. Just be in the heart and allow, allow the soul to bring all that you are into the here now as wisdom. Transforming lifetimes of experience, distilling the light and information out of experiences and lifetimes. And it comes in as wisdom. Now imagine yourself as that column of light again. You have all those energies in all that which is you, your sacred heart, your wisdom, your light, the light of the earth, the light of creation, the assistance of that golden light rod, the sacred heart. It is all there as one. Now, as you stand in this space, imagine another place you want to anchor a column of light. Like, let's say, a local emergency room in a hospital or a care facility or a school, someplace locally. Imagine yourself standing there. The shortcut version, just to breathe in that light of the earth, the light of creation. You become a column of light. Imagining that light of you, that field of wisdom, the sacred heart, all expanding out into whatever size of column you wish. Imagine that column of light covering that entire space or that entire building. And that energetics of that golden light rod, <clears throat> excuse me, are what helps to hold that energetic in place. 
So again, just imagining that center column of light. It's just a pure column of light, kind of looks like that brass rod. It's grounded into the earth. It's connected to creation. So that light column will exist there for as long as is needed. Now then stepping out of that space and leaving that light column there. And this is part of your energy, part of your light, your golden fire, your wisdom stays there to hold the space. But you are not leaving any part of you. You are infinite. Your energy is infinite. This is not detracting from you whatsoever. <clears throat> So as you step out of that space and come back into where you are now, okay, so this is where I'd like to take some questions from you guys. So be sure to drop your questions over here onto the questions tab. <clears throat> it is an interesting space to be in because it is a very peaceful space. So that's the thing. If you have not worked with or been attuned to this wisdom energetics before, you may feel like you don't want to leave that space. It really is huge, um, this wisdom energetics and bringing all that you are in and allowing all that you are to transform to wisdom because then we're no longer carrying the traumas, the old programs, the belief systems, all that which you can allow to release is released. And please do... Um, Bring in your questions that are relative to light anchoring. And if you do have other questions, we do our 50 questions Friday, which um, we'll, we can address. So, um, again, the wands are simply for us to have our attention to. Now the wisdom wand is one that when you attune to it, to that wisdom field, and again on the product page for the wisdom wand, and then also on our YouTube, it was the 50 questions Friday for December 3rd of 2021 that we walked through that process of the zero point and of attuning to this field of the wisdom. And so if you didn't quite follow through this time with that attunement, please do go to that December 3rd and on YouTube, there are time marks, timestamps on that YouTube page or on that YouTube video for working with that zero point and the wisdom wand. Um, so as far as if you should hold the wand in the left or right hand does not matter. Um, that's all pretty mental. Um, we want to make things simple in what feels right, but what feels right from the heart, not what feels right from the head and the ego. So when you go into the heart space, um, you'll just know. So yes, when you drop a light column and you are doing it with the golden light rod. So basically the attunement that we just did, when you go through the process now of anchoring a column of light, and we're going to do this an, another time just to make sure you have it down is when you now create a column of light out of all the energies that we just used. So now when you do a column of light, you imagine yourself being there and you're creating that column of light. And with those columns of light, you have the intention of bringing through that golden light rod, which is what holds that column anchored into place. 
you have the intention of bringing through that golden fire, the sacred heart, and you have the intention of bringing through that wisdom field. So this will get simpler and simpler. So when we do our next light anchoring here in a moment, it will be simple for you. But when you create that column of light, yes, it will stay there indefinitely if needed for as long as it's in the highest and best good. How far can we build a column of light? Can we make one for a whole city? So the columns of light are only limited by, by you, you know, for like my sister, um, Brenda, she can make a column of light that is, you know, as wide as she wants. For me, my columns of light seem to like kind of peter out around 20 feet is about how big my columns of light usually are innately. And I still know that that is a belief that I have of my columns of light, that they need to be smaller, to be more concentrated, to be more intense. Um, you know, that's my limiting belief on the columns of light. Um, the columns of light you can create as large as you wish. So like I say, um, yes, you can make one for a whole city. Um, and that's just, you know, again, it just comes with your intention when you're creating it of how big you want that column of light to be. Um, for me, again, just innately, my columns of light are about 20 feet across, unless I'm intending to make them smaller for like the exercise that we did here. Oh, let's see, is the intention for that column to stay forever or as long as needed or until something better comes along? Well, so innately that column of light will stay for as long as needed, if not indefinitely. So basically it is um, your soul that has helped to create that column of light and then that'll be up to your soul on how long that column stays. For us as the human, we just make that column and then we step away and we just let it do what it does. Um, yeah, and, and sorry for the confusion there. I was going to have you anchor two separate columns of light, <clears throat> but I forgot that we did not do the first attunement to the golden fire and light rod. Um, so if you just made two columns of light, that's fine. Or if you made one column of light, that's that's perfect too um basically whenever you make a column of light from here on it is going to contain all the energetics that we just went through um so let's see do you have to renew a column of light and can we do around do one around us also um no you never have to renew these columns of light um, you know, unless some other new energetic comes in, you know, kind of like what the wisdom did here recently, that that's an update to those columns of light. Um, when you use the wings of talk, the on the wings of talk, the newer version, or the wings of talk pendant to anchor a column of light, it will also hold that energetics of the wisdom because that is a part of these tools as well. Um, and can you do a column of light around you? Yes, you can totally create a moving column of light. Put one around your vehicle, put one around you, um, and just have that intention that it is always there, that it moves along with you. Um, let's see. And so a question about using like the golden light dowsing rod and the wisdom wand um right now when you do your columns of light you're going to be bringing through the energetics of the wisdom wand because that's going to be our intention when we create the columns of light so you can still use the dowsing rod as just your tool of your attention a visual tool for when you're creating the column of light so there are some different ways that you can create the column of light one of them is Yes, you just walk up to a tower and you hold this wand up in front of you and you imagine that the tower is right there and you just use that as your uh, your tool of attention. It's just a visual prop at that point. 
and then you bring in that column of light. When we did light anchoring 3.0 and how we did it at this point in time is, is that we became the column of light. And I almost feel that is a more powerful or more appropriate way to anchor columns of light anymore is, is that you imagine yourself there. So let's go ahead and do another light anchoring. So this time, think of a cell phone tower that is near you. Um, just think of a cell phone tower that you know of. And imagine yourself standing underneath or as that cell phone tower in that location. Now closing your eyes, taking that deep breath in from the earth, taking that deep breath in from creation. They both come together with that light of you and they expand up and down. You are a column of light. The energy of the earth running up and through you to creation, the energy of creation running down through you and into the earth. You are a column of light. Now then imagining that golden fire, that sacred heart as that column of light. That golden fire and light wand as that column of light. And that field of wisdom as that column of light. Beautiful. Now step out and come back to you here and now and just let that column of light stay. Now then that cell phone tower is going to be producing the frequencies of love and gratitude. It's going to be sending out on its communication waves, all of those energies. Everybody within that field, it is going to have a positive effect on them. Unless you're somebody who looks up at that cell phone tower and overrides that because we are all powerful creators. This will not violate the free will of anybody. If somebody has the free will choice of saying, oh, that damn cell phone tower, it is zapping me. Then that is going to be their creation. It will zap them. But for everybody else who is not stepping in and doing something with that different with that creation by saying that it's non beneficial to them. Anybody else who is unaware of that cell phone tower, they are going to be receiving all of those beneficial energies. So this is, this is huge. This is huge. We can affect a lot, a lot of energy fields. Okay, going back to the questions here for a moment. Let's see, when working with 5G small cells and any cellular towers, do I have to be in the presence of the towers or can I create one from a distance with intention, with intending to grid all towers in the city? So it's been our experience in the past that you have to know the place, whether you've been there before, that you see it in your memory, or you have a photograph of it, or you have a map. That is another great way. If you want to map, if you want to find on the wireless carriers website, a map of all of their small, um, all of their little 5G millimeter wave transmitters, pull out the map, go dot by dot, now you can make this happen in an instant when i drive down the highway when i travel cross country that is all i did for years and even people and places and cemeteries and everywhere water towers everywhere i went i anchored columns of light and i got it down to where it was just a simple intention that i would look over i would see something and I'd just go pew, pew, and there it is there's the column of light. So after you do this and you get confident in this, you can simply go through that map, look at the dot and be like, okay, column of light, take a breath. There it is. Another dot, take a breath. There it is. 
So um, either a map, a picture of the place, or your remembrance, or you being at that place. So from our experience, we just couldn't say, okay, every cell phone tower on the planet, boom. Maybe we can now. Things changing, things are changing fast. So please don't let anything limit what you can do with these columns because imagination is truly the limit. Um, and again, I cannot wait for everybody to play with this and play with your own column of light because once we, once we feel this and we know this, that this is a truth and a reality, holy smokes, something clicks and then we're just, it's just game on. Then we start anchoring columns of light everywhere with the confidence. Um, Let's see. So a question when doing the intention, um, do we have to hold the rod in the hand and point it at the building car, et cetera, and doing the column of light. So in the old ways that we've always taught of doing these is, is that we would hold the rod up and imagining that the cell phone tower is right here. And then we would imagine using our rod that the rod becomes the cell phone tower and that all the work occurs. Reality is we do not need the physical tool. It is something for the mind and it is something for basically the attunements and activations, which we've already done. <clears throat> so now then how I would suggest doing your columns of light is the way that we just did the last one. And the way we'll do the next one is, is that we imagine being there and that we become the column of light and that we bring through our golden fire, that sacred heart, that field of wisdom, and then we step out. And again, it's not like we are leaving anything behind because this we are drawing from an infinite pool of energy. This is not doing a disservice to us when we imagine ourselves as the column of light and then we leave it there. That is actually more of a service because your soul is there and your soul is helping to keep an eye on that space and holding that light there. It's, it's huge. Again, it's not going to do any form of depletion of us at all. Um, now the question is the column protect from robbery or entities, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, you know, my sister, when she used to run a, bar it was pretty wild because they had somebody that broke in broke a window into the office and came in but they were driven out instantly because you know my sister was always had those columns of light and those bubbles around her place um and you know they left instantly we had another friend who they had a fire down around their space created that column and you could see where the fire burned up to that edge and not their space. Um, so the columns of light are, they, they are protective in a way that those who come in with ill intent are either uncomfortable in that space or they shift. And we would rather see them shift than to try to create a column that just does not allow anybody or anything in. We should allow them in so that when they come in, it can shift. And that's what we're doing on the planet. And that's one other reason for doing these columns of light is, is that when you come into one of these columns, it is allowing the consciousness of that person, the soul of that person to come in more and allowing that shifting of the consciousness. So I always say, you know, dense consciousness is, is the thing like um, horror movies, football and beer, whatever. You know, just whatever dense consciousness to me, that's what it is. It's just things that are not, um, that you're not in any kind of a compassionate manner. The more consciousness you have, the more compassion you have. And then the more consciousness you have, then, you know, you don't, you have less judgment, less projections, 
um, everything else. And so it is the shifting of consciousness on this planet that is going to shift this planet so quickly right now is bringing through more consciousness. So these columns of light allow those who come into it to connect, to ground, to release, to come into center. Um, again, it's not going to violate the free will of anybody, though. All right. Any other last questions here? And we will do one more quick exercise of the columns of light. So this time, let's go back in time. Think of a place like maybe your school or your home where things were traumatic. Imagining going there at that time, maybe a little bit before that time. Imagine yourself standing in that space. Now let's go into the heart to make sure that you have no judgment. You're standing in that space. You become that column of light by breathing in that loving, unconditional loving energy of the earth up into the heart. Breathing in all of that support of soul of creation into the heart. You become a column of light that is grounded and connected, and you are in that time and in that space. That golden fire is there, that sacred heart, that is part of that light. That golden light rod is part of that light. That wisdom energy is a part of that light. We're not trying to fix or heal. We are holding space. Now leave that there and step back into the here now. And feel that. I feel a lot of shifts going on with all of you. As we change the past, we change the now. Time is very malleable. We can do a lot to change time. Want well, to change everything in creation by going through time. So again, this is just another possibility that you can work with. You can work with you as the original human. You can work with you on every birth that you've ever had. Any traumatic experience. Do it for this lifetime and do it for like even a situation that you had at work or at school or with a loved one. Go back to that moment, that space and place. Take in that breath from the earth, the breath from creation. Expanding your heart light, your sacred heart, your golden fire, your golden light. Expanding that into the column. Bring in that field of the wisdom. And it's just an intention. Your soul knows your intention and your soul is the one that's doing the work. We as the human are holding the space for it and having our intentions with it. Cool, there you go. It is as simple as that. All right, just a couple more questions here. So if we anchor a column of light into water, it does expand all through that entire body of water. So when you anchor a column of light into a river, which I do, I anchor columns of light into every bridge that I go over so that every car that drives through there, as well as all the water that flows through that river, because these wisdom fields will bring water back to its original crystalline structure, bring its consciousness back in, and it will clear all memory of that water.
So another question, if I anchored a column of light in roughly three foot location where people receive Holy Communion, will it instantly affect those people? So when we are creating a column of light and somebody steps into that field, it is all between them and their soul. Like let's say with that sacred heart activation, with that golden light, that golden fire that's in that column of light. When a person steps in there, it brings that remembrance of the sacred heart to the body. And it's between the soul and the person, whether the soul steps in and activates their sacred heart. So we are basically creating spaces that will plant the seeds, bring the remembrances, or full on shift that place in the people. But we simply hold the space without an agenda. So that is part of going into the heart space is that we don't want to be in fear of the cell phone tower. We don't want to be in fear of that big bad ghosty at the cemetery or that old house that you grew up in or that portal vortex that allowed in all these beings when you were a kid or an adult. We don't go into fear or judgment because it's not an intended outcome that we are searching for. We are searching for the highest and best outcome, which is what our soul will provide. So again, going back in time through time to do this is huge. Um, you know, if you have a friend who talks about a vortex in their basement, just imagine going there. So one more time, let's anchor a column of light somewhere. Imagine it where it is that you wish to anchor your column of light. You stand there in the heart space, untouchable, and even the darkest, darkest space. You are in your heart. You are very well protected by the soul. You become that column of light by breathing in that energy of the earth, the energy of creation. That brings through that golden fire of the sacred heart. That brings through that golden fire and light rod. And it's bringing through that energy of the wisdom. That wisdom energetics. And then you step out of it and leave it be. Beautiful. All right. Thank you all for joining me today and for doing this work. This is huge. So on solstice, I hope that as you go anywhere today, that you practice this, that you practice just making this happen in an instant, anywhere you look and intend. You stand there, you create the column of light. And that column of light contains everything that we've done here. And you don't have to name them off. Just make it simple. Your soul knows. Column of light, done. And play with this of going through time. So as you lay down tonight, Go through some of those times in your life that pop up, that need the clearing work, that are still there. This helps you release them too. All right, everybody. Thank you for being. We'll see you on a 50 Questions Friday coming up.